Hi, let's now look at uh, how to build responsive websites. Now, what are responsive websites? So you might have seen that you are going to see the website on a desktop, laptop, iPad, as well as mobile. You might see the websites on different devices. Now, when you are seeing the websites on different devices, you cannot build the website for a particular device. It should be responsive. When you change the size of the screen, automatically the layout should change. How are you going to do that? For example, in this website, gameofvisas.com, if I try to decrease the size of the layout, I mean, the viewport, the screen, then you can see that the layout is changing, it is responding. So it is to the changes here, there is a breakpoint. Now if I drag it in, this part is disappearing. And if I drag it in, now you can see that there is navigation bar at the top. Now navigation bar is becoming a menu bar, right? So this is what is called as responsive websites. So when you change the size of the uh, device or the width of the viewport, then automatically the layout is getting changed. Okay. So how are you going to achieve it? How are you going to make a website responsive? There are mainly four ways. Okay. I will show you. So So one way is by writing media queries. So what are media queries? I'll show you all this, don't worry. One way is by using media queries and the other way is by using grid and the other way is by using flexbox and grid and flexbox are part of CSS. So CSS supports them, you can use them directly. And then you can also use external frameworks in order to build responsive websites. One such example is uh, this bootstrap, okay? Bootstrap. Now, actually, Bootstrap is developed at Twitter. It was initially called Twitter Blueprint. Uh, then they have open sourced it, and now everyone is using it. This is the most popular CSS framework. Now, what is a framework and what is a library? Generally, we call the functions of a library, uh, we call it. But in case of Bootstrap, uh, the framework calls the calls our code that is the difference so bootstrap is a framework once you write the code bootstrap will use that code and it will generate a new code and then uh, use it okay so what are media queries you have to write like this annotation at the rate when you write at the rate that is annotation at the rate media will say that this is a media query now you can specify what is the maximum width or minimum width. If you write like this, maximum width equal to 600 means, it means that when the, when the size is between zero to 600, okay? So zero, ignore zero. Basically it means that when the size is less than 600 pixel, then you are going to apply these styles, which means you are going to write these styles differently for different screens. When the size you will fix it for desktop and then size you fix it for laptop. Like that you fix the sizes and if the size is like that, these styles have to be used. You can write for every size. Okay. So that is how media queries work. So then automatically when the size changes, then your layout will change depending on these rules. Okay. And the next one is CSS grid. So there are various ways a website can be laid out. Okay. So these are, these are different kinds of layouts. Maybe there is a navigation bar here. There is the content here. There are images here. So there are various ways you can lay out, right? So in order to lay, lay out the website in two dimensions, which means along X axis and Y axis, rows and columns, you can use CSS grid. For example, let us say I want a layout like this. Okay, there are three rows. First row is having one, uh, one complete row is taken by the first element. And then the second row is divided into two columns. Third row is divided into two columns. For that, your HTML code will look like this. Out the, a, div, a div is there, which is containing totally five elements. One, two, three, four, five, or totally five elements. And uh, all the elements are having the card class. And also we have a first element. Now, how are all these cards laid out? 
so generally when you use a div uh, and you and you write cards they are called cards okay so now if you observe it here the display is set to grid for this container which means for the outermost container you are saying that display is going to be grid and you are saying that grid template columns okay this is the property grid template columns is given 1 fr and 1 fr which means one fraction and one fraction it means that there are two columns of equal sizes 1 1 fr and 1 fr if you write 3 frs then it means that there are three columns each of size equal sizes okay and then grid template rows so for the rows you can specify how what is the height of them for example here it is given that this one is 100 pixel this one is 200 pixel this one is 200 pixel even though it doesn't look like that first one is 100 second one is 200 and third one is 200 for each row you can specify the height by using grid template rows and then gap how much gap you want to give between them so here there is gap right so this part is gap so that part is given as 30 pixels and then we are saying that for the first element for the first class where is the first class here for the first div inside the div the it is given as first here okay so for the first one we are applying grid column span of two which means it is going to span for two columns that is the meaning of it grid is spanning for two columns and then the background is applied blue leave leave that part i didn't change the background there but this is how it works so you are able to now create a grid now the beauty of this concept is we didn't specify how wide uh, in a, a element can be one div can be here we have specified one fr and one fr for this and for this two fr is there okay then we are not specifying actually in pixels then the beauty is whenever you are decreasing the size of the uh, website they will automatically be resized based on the width of the uh, device okay so that is how it can be responsive we will see this as a separate lecture okay css grid and then flexbox so flexbox is mainly used for one dimensional uh, layouts like uh, like this in one dimensional in one dimension okay or you can also go in one dimension in the column okay so here we have flex container one class one div and inside that div we have four elements one two three four okay now if you observe it display is set to flex and the background is blue for each card for all the cards background is blue and we have given a border of uh, 30 pixel so 30 pixel border is given it is not visible there and the height is 100 pixel which means height of each one is each div is 100 pixel for all the cards we have applied for all the divs we have applied these styles and then we have mentioned that the first one is having a flex of 2 the first element is going to have a flex of 2 this element <coughs> the class first has got a flex of 2 and the class second has got a flex of 1.5 class second which means the second div has got a flex of 0 0.5 and then a common thing that has been applied is flex 1 for all of them so initially flex 1 is applied for all the divisions and then using the class selector it has been replaced so whatever rule is below that will take higher priority so that is why this one has got 2 this one has got 0 0.1 1 and 1 right now how will the layout happen is the total number is 2 plus 0 0.5 plus 1 plus 1 which is how much 2.5 plus so 4.5 out of the 4.5 two parts are given to this and 0 0.5 part is given to this one part is given to this one part is given to this out of 4.5 now the beauty is whenever you decrease the size then based on the width the proportionately it will distribute the uh, layout which will give you the slides uh, it will according to the size of or width of the device 
all the elements will get the width based on these proportions 2 out of 4.5 0 0.5 out of 4.5 like that <coughs> and then bootstrap so yeah one more thing i want to specify here is so where where this can be useful is when you have a website and you have to lay out something in this horizontal way okay maybe there is about a section here there is a navigation bar here something is here then it can be used similarly it can be used for column also which means you can have elements like this one here one here one here maybe there is navigation bar here content here footer here you can use it there okay now the next one is bootstrap framework in bootstrap you don't have to write anything you have to already for for certain classes already styles all written now you have to just use that class for example here if you observe this class container container for that container class already styles are applied in bootstrap you don't have to apply them similarly row is a class card column is a class card column is all these classes for all these classes already styles are applied and you have to just use them you don't have to write specifically any style any styling okay so how it will work is in bootstrap this entire part is going to be divided into 12 parts so two parts one two three one two three one two three one two three like this 12 parts will be divided and you are saying that this div has to take six columns which means first element will be first card will be till this part and the second card is two parts till this part and the third card is four parts one two three four okay that is how it is going to divide so which one is better there is nothing like uh, you know which one is best all the three are used in combination to achieve what you want to achieve generally for every website the requirements will be different so depending on the requirement of the website one of these uh, four ways will be selected and we are going to see all these four ways in detail in the coming lectures okay thank you so if you create a container and if you put some elements in the container and then apply flex to the container then automatically flex will arrange all the elements in the container in a particular order or in a particular style which is which looks good on most of the websites okay automatically it will uh, generate some kind of presentation if you don't like it you can change it by using some other parameters for flex which we will see later for this for, for this video we will see how to use flex how to apply flex and how do elements look after you apply flex so let us say there is a div outside and inside that div there are three divs which means outside div is acting as a container let's call it as container div okay i mean let's call apply a class called container so the outer container is the outermost div and inside it there are three divs one two and three okay now how can you apply flex to the container by writing like this you can select the class and you can set display to flex now when you set display to flex automatically all the elements which are inside the divs which have paragraphs they will be styled in such a way that they look good on most of the websites okay so and we don't have actual control over how they look until you do it and see it there is there are no fixed rules yeah rules may be there but there may be too many but you have to do it and see the see how it is looking like and then change it okay so in this case we have three paragraphs in the divs all those three paragraphs are actually appearing in line so one after the other they are appearing okay now let us say we have a container and inside the container there is a div which is display block there is a span which is inline there is a paragraph which is display block and there is an image uh, this image is also in inline inline element now if you apply div to all these four together then it is going to look like this 
okay all of them are going to be arranged side by side in a row like this and then if you want some spacing between these elements then you can also give gap gap is 5 5 pixel when you apply gap to the container then there will be gap between the elements okay you can see that there is a gap okay and now if actually a flex box is going to take the entire width which is by default a block okay a flex box is a block block display but if you want to change it to inline you can write inline flex then it is going to take only till the point where the elements are there after that you, you know the other elements can come after it which means we can make a flex box inline also by default it is block okay let's see one example so let us say let us say we have an unordered list which is containing four list items some web pages and some links are there anchor tags are there by default list items are block display which means they will not allow other elements to come side by side now i want to take this entire thing and i want to convert it into a navigation bar so one bar at the top with the element side by side right so first let's remove these dots so for that you have to say list style none for a list element you select all the list elements li and you say list style none then all the dots are going to be removed okay and then you can apply display to the container here the container is ul all the list elements are present inside ul so that is the container so to the container we apply display flex gap 10 and background color now you can see that all of them are arranged side by side okay thank you